Welcome back to Annie Makes Art School. It's Ugly Art Week, and today we are diving into our ugliness by experimenting with really kind of random, chaotic mark making. So your materials list for this is going to be pretty specific to you. You're going to want a medium to work with. So I'm gonna be working with ink, but you could also use paint or really any liquid medium that you feel most comfortable with. You're gonna want a surface to work on top of. I suggest something that's fairly large and also not particularly valuable to you. So a big piece of cardboard, some newsprint, whatever you wanna work with. We're just gonna be making marks so uh, it doesn't need to be particularly precious. The third part is the most ambiguous part, which is you're gonna pause the video right here and you're gonna find anything in your home that you feel like you could make interesting marks with. This could be sponges, utensils, straws, fabric, literally anything that you don't mind getting paint or ink on and you think could create some interesting marks, pause here and go get it. So I found painter's tape, a spray bottle, ribbon, popsicle stick, string, a couple of different kinds of leaves, some paper clips and nails and twist ties, a spatula, Q-tips, salt, sandpaper, this weird vintage insulator thing that I feel like might make a cool texture, some sponges, some feathers, and who knows along the way I might find some other stuff and just throw it in the mix. No worries at all if you didn't find as many weird garbage treasures in your house as I did. Uh, you can follow along with me and if there are any of the marks that I make that you think would be exciting to incorporate into your practice, most of these items are pretty readily available. The only one you might have difficulty finding is that weird antique whatever that thing is that I happen to own, but everything else is uh, pretty much trash. So I'm gonna be working with aqua ink today, which is one of my favorite inks to work with. It's a little bit watercolor, a little bit ink, and a lot of fun. I'm gonna be using this bright, bold blue. And the first thing I'm gonna do is use my painter's tape for two different purposes. I wanted a bigger piece of paper than I had on hand, so I'm going to use it to combine my two pieces, which I'll later separate and make into like a duo of abstract weirdness. Um, so I'm gonna use this to temporarily connect them, and I'm also going to use it to keep my page down on the surface, just because I think things are gonna get pretty messy and chaotic. And then while I'm at it, I'll also just add some tape at random points to block out those areas so they stay white as I add the other layers on top. I like using painter's tape um, in abstract works because it adds this really crisp line to what's usually pretty loose messy, chaotic uh, material experimentation. So if you don't incorporate painter's tape into your practice, I do suggest you at least play with it and just see what you think. Okay, I think that's gonna be our painter's tape for today. And that's going to help keep my paper down and also block out those areas. And from here, we're gonna get into our ink. So for today, I'm not gonna use a paintbrush at all. Okay, so I've gone through about half of my supplies so far, and I do think I wanna add in a second color. So I'm gonna pause. I'm letting this layer dry a little bit. I'm gonna wipe off some of the salt and take the tape off and then go into it with another color and the rest of my supplies. While we let this dry, let's do a little review of how things have gone so far, because it's been a mixed bag. Okay, so first let's talk about some things that didn't work so great. My little dried leaves. I had high hopes for these guys, but they were too frail and too delicate and they didn't really carry the ink across the page as much as I had hoped that they would. I think it really depends a lot on what leaves you're working with and how fragile they are and then what kind of ink or paint you're working with. But in this case, like two out of, no, one, one out of five stars. I'm sorry. Similarly, I had very high hopes for nails for some reason. I felt that rubbing a pile of nails around the paper with my hands like a drunk baby was gonna somehow lead to a cool pattern. It did not. I still believe that there's some way that you could do cool stuff with these. I did a little like stamping with the little circle part and that was okay, I guess. I don't know. One out of five stars, unfortunately. Now let's talk about some things that did work. First of all, my absolute favorite, ink string. Ink string gets five out of five stars. Ink string was very fun. Everyone should play with ink string. Very good. I do recommend a little thicker, like this is a yarn as opposed to like a sewing thread. Um, yeah. I've also seen online people will use those little like ball chains or anything that has this kind of vibe to it, worth playing with, I'd say. Next one that I love, spatula. I did not expect to love spatula as much as I did. I thought it was gonna be basically the same as my go-to paint smearer, which is just a little wooden popsicle stick. This is still great. This is gonna get like a, I don't know, three out of five stars is good. Spatula is much better. 
a more satisfying movement, really pulls the ink across the page in a much more smooth fashion. This is gonna get a four, this is gonna get a three. Okay, up next we've got some sponges. I used two different kinds here, more of kind of a traditional sponge and then more of an arty nature sponge. Um, both are good, both had a similar texture. The big difference that I saw was that this one's a little more tighter packed, a little more firm, so it kept the ink pretty heavy on the page versus this one absorbed more of the ink and left a lighter impact. Depending on the effect you want, both are good. Fork, I fork, I fork. I threw fork in the mix last minute um, because I just saw it and got excited. Love fork, fork is great, four out of five stars. Painter's tape and my little dish of salt. We're still waiting to see the effects. I have a pretty good guess, I've used them before, but on this particular piece, don't know yet, gotta let it dry. So that's where we stand right now. We still have a few more items to play with, and like I said, I wanna mix it up and bring another color in. For my second color, I really wanna add yellow, but I don't have a yellow aqua ink. So I just grabbed one of the little yellows off of a very cheap watercolor palette and I'm just mixing it with some water to create like a bright yellow watercolory wash. Now comes the moment of truth. I'm going to take off some of the salt and some of the tape. So you can see where that leaves that cool kind of speckly texture underneath. And then we're gonna peel off our painter's tape. Oh, look at that clean line amidst the chaos. This one's under my tripod a little bit. Sorry about that, excuse me. I'm telling you, painter's tape is a game changer. I was like, I don't really like this piece. And then I started peeling this tape off and I was like, oh my gosh, she's beautiful. It's like in uh, like 90s rom-coms where the girl takes her glasses off and she looks exactly the same just without glasses and everyone's like, oh my God, she's a vision now. We used to hate her, but now we see she's beautiful because she does not have glasses. That is painter's tape. I took a first pass on this with my hair dryer, and I did want to mention one of my favorite art tools. I'm incredibly impatient. This is very helpful for a lot of mediums for speeding up the drying process, but it's also a mark making tool in that the wetter areas of the painting, as I was applying the hair dryer to it, the ink would spill across in like drips in that direction, and I could kind of guide the drips or point them in different ways with my hair dryer. So if you don't use a hair dryer, that's also worth experimenting with. While we wait for the last little bit of it to dry, because I didn't completely get it with this, uh, let's go over the rest of our materials so far. So first of all, winner, winner, chicken dinner, five out of five stars. It creates the little dot circle, which I figured it would, that's not shocking. It's a circle of dots, of course it did, but I loved how smoothly it transferred over. It was really fun, it's like a big weird stamp. Love it, if you can get your hands on a vintage Hemingway 42, do that. Q-tips are an old favorite. They did their job, but they're not particularly exciting. Uh, two out of five stars. Paperclip was full, go girl, give us nothing energy. Did not help. I didn't unwind it. I'm sure I could have like drawn with it real skinny, but I don't, it didn't. Zero out of five stars, don't care. Okay, I'm gonna be real with you. I had feathers in my original lineup to use. And then the first time I was drying, I used the hairdryer a little bit and I blew the feathers away. So I put them in a drawer so they wouldn't blow away and then I forgot about them and now I don't care. So if you wanna find out if feathers make cool marks, that's on you now. <laughs> and last but not least, we have sandpaper. I'm not sure how well this will work, uh, especially on not an entirely dry surface. So I'm gonna find one of the drier areas. I'm actually finding I enjoy this more on the more fragile surfaces, the areas that st are still a little bit damp because it's having a more powerful reaction. That probably wouldn't be the case if my paper was a little thinner because it would just eat it. Um, but on this thicker paper, it lets me peel off the top layer um, in a really kind of soft way. Yeah, I'm not mad at that at all. I'm gonna say four out of five stars to our sandpapery friend. Okay, so here's how my finished pieces turned out. Here's one, it's okay. I'm not wild about this one. But here's two, I love it. We got the circle of dots, we got our slashes. 
In fact, as a combination, I do like these two together, but just by itself, I'm not wild about that one. I think my favorite tool out of the entire set was using the uh, yarn dipped in ink. And that was so early on in the process that most of those lines actually got pretty covered up. So I may do some more work just playing with just that string technique. Um, I'm really curious to see what you guys did. If you also engaged in some experimentation with different types of materials, if you post any of it online, please tag me. I want to see, I want to cheer you on. And I hope you're enjoying Ugly Art Week. There's a lot more yet to come.